hey, if you're tired of feeling overcommitted, exhausted, overwhelmed, perhaps you feel like you just have too much to do, there's always something to do, and you're just getting tired, then you've come to the right spot. So stop your scrolling, stay right where you're at, and welcome to First Orlando Talk, the show where life and faith come together. I'm Mike Woods, the social media manager here at First Baptist Orlando, and my guest today started her competitive skiing career at the age of five. And then as the years went on, she became an eight-time U.S. Masters champion, a four-time U.S. champion. She held, are you still the current record holder? No, it was broken in 2010. Okay. She held it for 18 years. So yeah, so she, she held the record in women's slalom mm -hmm. for 18 years. In water skiing. In water skiing, <laughs> right. Not snow skiing, not water skiing. skiing. And then in 2003, she combined her love of Jesus Christ and her passion for skiing, and she formed a ministry called In His Wakes. It's an international water sport outreach ministry. You can find that at inhiswakes.com if you'd like to learn more about that. She's authored two books, Running the Course and Hit It, and then she has created Victorious Living Magazine. Right. It's a magazine for those of you who want to be inspired and encouraged to live the victorious life with Jesus Christ, and I'll give you the, uh, the URL for that in just a second. There is so much more to this biography that I could add, but we would easily take up half the show <laughs> if I was going to keep going. So let me just add... Um, Two more things. You're married to your best friend, Tim. You all have been married for 23 years. Yes. And then you have three beautiful children, Ty, Dalton, and Ivy. You've done your homework. All right. I've tried to do my <laughs> homework. So I want you to welcome my friend, sister in Christ, Christy Overton Johnston. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. This is a person right here who's doing a lot. She's a wife, a mom, a ministry leader, an athlete has a lot going on and what originally prompted me to talk to you about doing an interview with you was in your recent edition of Victorious Living Magazine you wrote an article called The Sweet Spot and uh, initially in the article you talked about the sweet spot and what that feels like as a skier but you're doing so much more than that but I want you to go back and take us to the part of the story because you, you get to a part of the story where you're not in the sweet spot. Right. It, it's the opposite of being in the sweet spot. Right. Could you take us back to that part of the story and what was going on in your life where you just got to the point where you just felt like you were hitting a wall? Right, you know at that time I was on my sweet spot on the water ski. I was bringing in world championship titles and world cup titles and records but in life I was not in the sweet spot. In fact, at that point um, in my life, in probably 2004, 2005, I was curled up in a closet in a fetal position, and my husband was standing over me saying, I think you need to get to a doctor and get on some drugs. <laughs> I mean, that's how out of balance my life was. That's how emotionally unstable I was at that point. And the ironic thing is, is I had just stepped into ministry. I had been a believer my entire life. I grew up in a Christian home. I accepted Jesus Christ at a very young age, was baptized at the age of eight. I knew about Jesus, but I really didn't know him, and I didn't know how to live in the sweet spot with him. So I stepped into ministry, and I carried my performing uh, background with me. So here I am. I've been Christy the water skier since I was four years old. And a very good one at that. Well, thank a a world-class athlete. Yeah, I had a lot of falls, too. <laughs> <laughs> so if I stumble with my words, I hit my head a few times. <laughs> no, but I, you know, I had been Christy the water skier since I was four years old. My dad, um, he was the best motivator in the world. And one thing that he did is he motivated me with money. So here I am, five or six years old, and... He's, uh, you know, waving little dollar bills at that point. Hey, if you do this many tricks in a row and you've learned this, you get $5 or, or whatever. And, and I love to water ski, but I really liked those little dollar <laughs> bills. So that motivated me. But what happened is the Lord has shown me that I developed this mindset of performing for favor, mm -hmm. performing to get good things. And I carried that into ministry performing for God so that he would bless my ministry. 
I remember the smile on my father's face when I would ski great. Mm -hmm. And my dad was still smiling even when I didn't ski great. But again, the Lord showed me I developed this mindset of I had to do great things for my father to be pleased. And that wasn't true in the natural. And it's Big not F father, true. little F father, both. both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had the best earthly father I could imagine. But somehow Satan twists things, and he twisted that motivation technique into a mindset that I have to perform for my heavenly father and my earthly father for them to be pleased, and that's a lie. So I carry this performance mindset into ministry, and I tell you, I had someone tell me one time, your greatest strength, Christy, is your heart of perseverance. It made you a world champion water skier, but your greatest weakness is your heart of perseverance because you don't know when to stop. And when it came... In your own strength. In your own strength. Yeah. No, you don't stop with God. Yeah. You keep going and you press through. But I didn't know when to stop physically. I didn't know when to stop and let Him take over. And to be honest, I didn't know how. Yeah. So here I am in the closet in a fetal position, really at a mess. I remember my husband... He came in, he says, Christy, when all you did was water ski, and that wasn't all I did. I water skied, I went to law school, um, got you know past the bar, so I've always juggled a lot of things, but here's the thing, I don't say that braggingly. Yeah. I say that because my husband pointed out to me, he said, in the real world, you were balanced. You would go train, you would go compete. You were able to go and study. You had relationships. We went on dates. We had fun. But now that you're in ministry and you're doing all this for God, you're the most in, unbalanced, out of balance person I've ever met. And it was true. All I did was I worked on the computer, I mean, 11, 12 o'clock at night doing ministry stuff. Because if it's ministry stuff, it feels right. It feels right. But I, I was telling my little boy, Ty, go in the other room and play or watch TV because mom is helping people. <laughs> I, I, I would I, I laugh because I think my teenage <laughs> son, I'm on the computer doing a devotional and, you know, he has something on his mind, so he comes over and I react in a way like, can't you see I'm busy? I'm being godly right now. I'm doing something for God. Go away. And I did. I and sent I look him back away. and go, wow, oh, what was I thinking? I sent him away. And I remember one day, this is the part you're referring to, God finally showed me where the sweet spot could be found, and it's in Him. I was sitting on the end of my physical dock. I had gone down to the lake edge, and I'm sitting there, and I have tears rolling down my face. And I said, Lord, I have committed to follow you, and I have committed to use my water skiing, my gifts, my talents for you. Why in the world is this so hard? And I'm sitting there at the dock, and all of a sudden, in my mind, I see this picture of a boat. And then I see a water skier. I see me skiing, but the problem is I had my hands on the steering wheel and I had my leg on the outside of the boat. And I just started laughing. I was like, Lord, there's no way I could ski and drive the boat at the same time. Because if anyone could do it, it would be you. Yeah, and I probably could do it, but I wouldn't accomplish <laughs> it wouldn't very be pretty, much. Yeah. It wouldn't, I mean, what fun would that be? I'd be driving with my foot hanging out of the side of the boat. And he says, You can't drive and ski at the same time. And it's the same thing with God. It's like, I was trying to ski in my power, or ski for him. I was trying to live for him in my power. You know, a skier needs a power source. Yeah. And you have to be connected to the power source. Then you have to step off the dock. You have to say, hit it to the power source. And then it doesn't, I mean, I have really big muscles. And when I competed, I had really, really big muscles. But the thing is, those muscles were nothing in comparison to the strength of the boat. Mm -hmm. And if I was to pull my arms up like this, it would pull me out of position. And I would lose the power of the boat. And I would lose the, the use of the power of the boat. And the power of the boat would just take me right out the front of the ski. Mm -hmm. It was all about tapping into the power of the boat, trusting it, relying on it, and getting in position. And that's what the Lord told me. He's like, it's time for you to get behind me. Trust me, say hit it to me, and, and when you fall, which I did over and over in ministry and I have done in life, keep saying hit it mm -hmm. and don't quit it. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? I was thinking about uh, what you were saying. So you're doing all these things, you're doing them for God, it's just 
doesn't feel like it's working out though. Not not that because there wasn't good things happening, but you're just becoming exhausted and tired. And now you're in a fetal position, curled up on the floor. What were your thoughts about? What was running through your head? I mean, uh, God, like, where are you? Or what were your thoughts about God at that time and why he wasn't making this easier for you? It wasn't so much my thoughts towards God. It was always towards me because I'm a, my, I am my own greatest oh. critic. Mm -hmm. So I just knew I wasn't working hard enough. And it, it wasn't I was going to stop working for God. I was committed. But my efforts were really misplaced, and I was doing it the wrong way. And, I th and the thing is, like you said, it wasn't that there weren't results. My goodness, people were coming to the Lord left and right. Doors are opening. Opportunities are opening. And so you can look at that and think, well, I must be doing, you know, it must be God's will. It could be misleading. It can Sometimes. be because everybody around me is seeing something. Christy, you need to slow down. I'm not slowing down. Look at all these people. Look at the lives that are being changed. In the meantime, I'm twitching. <laughs> doing every, seriously, doing everything in my own strength. And at that same time, I was having health issues. Yeah. For 10 years, chronic health issues with Lyme disease, fibromyalgia. My, I had 16 major surgeries. And I remember at one time, crawling across the floor on my stomach to pick up a little piece of paper off the floor and with my husband's sitting there and I just said can't you see I need help and his reply to me might as well hit me over the head with my crutch he said I wanted to see how far you'd go before you'd ask for help mm -hmm. and so I think a lot of women a lot of ministry leaders you feel like you've got this call in your life you feel like it's on this weakness to ask for help do you think that's true? Uh, I can speak for men, and I know for men it certainly does feel like a weakness to have to ask someone else for help. Is that also true for women? Oh, yeah. Just as true? Do you know what if... I, I met with the small group that I have the chance to be with um, each week here at First Baptist. Yeah, you were and, with them this morning. Yeah, it was awesome. And the one thing we were talking about is constantly having to forgive ourselves for not being perfect mm -hmm. and not have done enough and not have finished the checklist. And the checklist is always there, whether you're in ministry or whether you're a parent. Um, Why? It never goes away, Mom. anything. Yeah, friend. So a couple of thoughts. Um, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking about what you were talking about and the results that were happening in your ministry. Um, a lot of it could have been due more towards your perseverance then maybe something, not that God wasn't in it, right. but I'm just, it dawns on me as you say that, that it's possible that all these results are happening that you want to see happening, that you're trying to do for God, but if it feels like it's coming at the expense of your health, your mental health, your emotional health, your, your physical health, your marital health, that maybe, what would have, I'm just trying, I'm wondering, was that an indicator that maybe you weren't on the right track, sure. these, these things. What would you say to women or anyone who's watching for that matter who's working hard, they're persevering, and things are happening, but as each day goes by, the life is just draining from them. What are some of the clues that helped you to realize, wow, you know what, I, I need to park it here and have a conversation with God? One of the two big clues is one... Do you have time for relationships? Mm -hmm. And I was so busy ministering to strangers that I didn't have time to have even a cup of coffee mm -hmm. with friends. Husband? Husband? Kids? Husband, go on. I'll be to bed in a little bit. I mm -hmm. have to do my ministry. And thank God he was so patient for me. And we were stronger than ever. But it was... It, I have a strong personality. A lot of women do. and we're, We want to fix things. We want to do things. But that to me is if I don't have time to even go get a cup of coffee with somebody, I'm too busy. And, and, I'm, and I'm not one who needs a lot of relationships like that kind of time. Yeah. But I have to remember, actually, I do need it. Mm -hmm. I do need to sit with women and, and just listen to them and talk with them and share my heart. Another cl clue to me is your anxiety level and your emotions when you are biting people's heads off <laughs> when you're snapping 
when you're fearful, when you're anxious, when you're caught up in a closet in tears, mm -hmm. something's wrong. Yeah. When you're overcome with fear that you're not going to get it all done and guilt, something's wrong. But here's what I didn't know. I grew up in the church and I knew about salvation, but I did not understand how you walk with Christ on a daily basis and find this sweet spot with God. Let me get to that in just a second because I, you know, uh, for folks who are feeling that way, and you certainly have, what you can start to do to get to that sweet spot. But something else just occurred to me. In addition to what we were talking about, it sounds as if God will let you persevere yourself <laughs> into the closet, <laughs> into the closet in a fetal position, uh, wrecking your relationships and everything like that. Uh, he's not necessarily going to jump in and rescue you from that until you've reached the point where you've acknowledged, I can't do this in my right. own strength. Yeah, and I'm so thankful, really, for the process. So he let you get to that point. He let me get there. I put myself there, yeah. and I'm sure he sent me many warning signs, but honestly, <laughs> I didn't know what they were, and I, I had a pure heart. Yeah. I mean, as pure as it can, you know, a yeah, you human can be. You weren't doing all this for Christy. You were doing this for God. No, I didn't want made any... it feel more. Oh, yeah, and, or, <laughs> God, I'm doing this all for you. <laughs> what in the world? And, <laughs> and so it's just like, I didn't know that there was a real enemy that was telling me, you're not good enough. You haven't done enough. You have to do all this perfectly. And so it took me walking through a process with the Lord, Him showing me, in such love and such patience that he's not about perfection. He's just about a perfect heart towards him that is willing to just step back, see where he's working, join him in letting him take control, yeah. and then things begin to change. So what were the deliberate things or changes that you did at that point to move you more towards where God wanted you to be and less of where you thought you needed to be? Let's see, that was about 2004, 2005, so we're 13, 13 years later, and I'm still learning. I'm, I mean, I'm just being honest. That is my, my biggest weakness, but it is one thing that I have learned. I pray a lot more before I step into things. I, I'm a visionary, too, so you add... What are you praying for? I yes, praying God, for yes, wisdom. or... I don't pray for open doors, necessarily. A lot of people do, because... There's a lot of open doors. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of opportunities. I want the wisdom to know which ones to walk through. Mm -hmm. I want the wisdom. There's a lot of closed doors. I want the wisdom to know which one to keep knocking at. So just to understand that for me, it was doing a lot of soul searching. David says in Psalms, search me, O God, and show me if there's anything in me that's offensive mm -hmm. so that I can walk in the way everlasting. Okay. And that became the prayer of my heart. And it instead of looking at other people, blaming other people, or being so busy, I began to step back and say, Lord, search my heart and show me. And even, like I said, over the last couple of weeks, he's been showing me where some of these mindsets of performance that were embedded as a little girl. You have to perform. You have to perform. Well, we don't have to perform for God. Right. We just got to be available to God. We got to trust God. We, he, all he calls us to do is Love me with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Okay. You're journaling as a result of your prayers? Or my you journaling was my prayers. Okay. Because I'm one who, I don't want to diagnose myself, but I'd say ADD. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband says, squirrel, because <laughs> I can't go over here. So I pray, right? Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day. And I just start with praising and going. And then, Lord, here's what I feel. Here's what I, I'm seeing and what I'm worried about. Because the Bible says, pray about everything. Mm -hmm. Tell me everything. Be anxious over nothing. So I just write, and here's what happens to me. My little handwriting goes from Christie's words to God to God's words to me. And it just transforms. And I just start writing what I hear. And, and it, I would see love letters to me. All scripture based. It's like the Lord just brings scripture out of my heart. Mm -hmm. Be anxious over nothing, Christie. We're wrapping up our time here. What else would you like to add? Give me a definition of the sweet spot. To me, the sweet spot is being in the river with God, is stepping off 
in total abandon and saying, God, not my will, but your will. Not my strength, but your strength. Being willing to have your day rearranged, being willing to just have your eyes open and ears open to see and hear where God is working and be willing to go in the river and go in that direction. Go where the boat takes you. Go where it takes you. And don't be so rigid and don't be so even excited that you're way over here and the river's taking you that way. And so for me, it's like you look at your gifts, you look at your talents, look at what God, look at your experiences and good or bad. God uses all of that. that. That's part of your sweet spot. And then you tap into his power and you trust him and you just watch where he's working and going and you join him. And then it becomes his ministry and it becomes his opportunities and it becomes his power. It becomes his words and then everything changes. Man, I feel a sermon coming. <laughs> oh, I could preach for two more hours. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today and sharing all this. If you would like to find out more about this world-class athlete, her love for Jesus, her love for people, and how she takes the life lessons that she's been through and what God's taught her along the way to equip and encourage people to live the victorious life, make sure that you head over to her website, Christy Overton Johnson. I'll put it in the show notes or the comment section so that you can find it in there. And that is where there is so much there, to be quite honest. And if you can, I started out with Victorious Living Magazine. Get a copy of that. You write so many stories of just other people whose stories are similar to yours, but the circumstances are different. But it's nonetheless of getting to be where they were and to where God uh, wants them to be in that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. So definitely worth, read, uh, worth reading that. And while you're at it, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube page so that you can have access to our sermons, our worship content, other talk shows that we've done and so much more. In the meantime, thank you for joining us. God bless and have a great day.